Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have just got finished um, putting Kyler down for a nap. So I wanted to make a video really quick just going over my top five things for three to six months. And these were just things that I found helped me um, during this stage of my baby boy's life and I hope some of these things you can find helpful as well. The first thing is Baby Einstein's Sea Dream Soother. So I'll add a picture so you guys can see how it is. And it is a little screen that plays music and has lights and some things move around. You can do different types of um, noises and stuff with it. Actually, I will film a little piece and show you guys what it is that it does, but the way it works is it slowly gets dimmer and quieter and it really helps um, put my son to sleep. So he uses it every night when he goes to bed and every time he goes lay down for a nap time. I'm a big believer of putting your child to bed awake, tired, but awake. And I think this really helps keep him in a good self-soothing um, behavior. So I put this little machine on, I lay him down, I walk out of the room, and he falls asleep on his own in there. And the way I have it set up as I attach it to his bed, and he can actually press the button now and turn it on himself. He is six, almost seven months now, so um, I find that that's probably, you know, a little bit older. Now that he's getting older, he can do that. Uh, I do have to say that this is in my three to six month uh, must haves because my son was not sleeping in his own crib at night um, until after three months. So when he was a newborn and still in that newborn stage, he did sleep in a bassinet or a um, pack and play with us in the same room as us. He never was really sleeping in his own crib. So now that we've transitioned him into his room, this really helps him self-soothe and put himself to sleep. Or if he wakes up, sometimes he turns it on and like plays in there a little bit before he starts fussing for us to come get him. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is also a nap time, um, bedtime type of thing, and that is a camera. I have the Alouette camera for a baby monitor. There is a ton out there, so find whatever works best for you. I know people like the ones that have the apps. Some people like the ones that have a screen you can put and take with you wherever you go. So whatever works for you guys, um, I think everyone just needs something. Uh, it's really nice to be able to check in from my room to make sure he's sleeping, see if he's awake. My son doesn't always scream or like yell for me whenever he wakes up. Sometimes he's in there playing for a while and I don't want to create a behavior where he thinks he has to scream for me to come get him. So I do try to watch his camera and my camera does notify me if there's any sound or movement. So if he's awake in there, you know, moving around and stuff like that, I do get an alert and then I will go in there and get him if he looks like he's awake and doesn't look like he's gonna go back to sleep. So hopefully we're creating some good habits in his nap and sleep time routines. Um, but that is my two things that I don't have here to show you guys, but everything else I'll be able to show you guys here. So the next thing I'm going to go to is kind of like a two part thing, but I'm putting this in like one category. So the first part of it is this little Fisher Price um, sit me up. So the great thing about this is that your child can sit in here with their bottom in here and it helps them be able to learn to hold their selves up. So this is a good thing to start when they have head control a little bit. So it might be able to be used before three months if your child has good um, neck and head control, but it teaches your kid to use those different muscles that they wouldn't necessarily 
be using in the same way if they were laying down. So it's a good transition to help your child learn to sit up on their own. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the boppy. If you watched my zero to three months must haves for a baby, I did not talk about this. And that is because this boppy I did not use for breastfeeding and I didn't use it pretty much at all when my son was a newborn. But now that he's older, I placed this on the ground and I let him sit in between the boppy and it's helping him learn to sit up on his own. He is six months now, he sits up on his own just fine without falling over and stuff like that. But he started sitting up around four months unassisted for short periods of time. So when I place him in here to sit, it'd give him a little bit of stability, but without keeping him up all the way. So he could still, you know, fall over or slide down it if he was fussing, getting tired, things like that. But it was allowing him to use more of his muscles and have to keep himself a little bit more steady. So I think that these two things are a good transition to help your baby learn to sit up on their own. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to have both if you don't have both, but I know a lot of people buy a boppy to breastfeed and if you're using it for breastfeeding, maybe it works for you and that's great. But if you already have it and you're using it for breastfeeding or not for breastfeeding, it's a great tool to help your child learn to sit up on their own. So a little tip here if you haven't already thought about that or if you haven't tried it yet with your child. The next thing I want to talk about is kind of a play style item and I actually have a bunch of them so I'm going to show you guys kind of the idea. So it's these little like stuffed animal like things that have you know like a little tag, a teether, they have rattles, all the different things. I have a fox, I have a little moose, and it has like you know teething things, rattle, the black and white colors, I have a little caterpillar hungry hungry caterpillar one uh i love these things i even have more we have one in each car that we keep in there all the time these are really great for occupying your child and giving them different types of sensory things so they have these have you know the textured teethers they make a lot of noise i think if you're just gonna have like a toy for your kid to play with and you're not planning on buying a bunch of different things these style toys are great, especially in the car or if they're, you know, laying in their um, swing, bassinet, things like that. And you just have them there to like, you know, keep them in a safe place while you do something. These toys are absolutely great. I would recommend at least having one of these. I have one in each of my cars. <laughs> and if you're on the house, can't tell. The last thing that I am sharing on my list is bibs. And there's a lot of kind of bibs out there. I just wanted to tell you guys the two bibs that I found work the best for me at this stage is really when they start to drool a lot. Sometimes they're getting teeth. Sometimes it's just part of their anatomy. Babies don't have all of the muscle groups yet to like, you know, keep their mouth completely closed. So they tend to drool a lot. So I wanted to show these two bibs. So this is a little bandana bib from Copper Pearl. I absolutely love these bibs. They're super absorbent. So if you're willing to spend a little bit extra money for a bib, I would highly recommend these Copper Pearl bibs. They have the little snap buttons. They're not Velcro. I am not a fan of Velcro bibs. These bibs are great. Super absorbent for when they're drooling. Awesome. Another bib I wanna recommend, these are by Dr. Brown. And it's a little bandana bib with some bananas on it. And it has this teething ring. So when your kid is teething, they can chew on this little ring and then it just snaps off and you can take the ring off and have it just be a bib. But it is good because if they're chewing on the um, teether, it just catches the drool for them. So I would highly recommend these two style bibs. They do not have the plastic backing. If that is something that you are looking for, um, I know Carter makes a, Carter's makes a lot of bibs like that. 
but I honestly do not like those style bibs. I don't think that they're as absorbent, especially if you have a child that is just drooly or teething. It kind of just, you know, runs down them and makes them super wet, and then they take a long time to dry. These bibs, I find, stay very dry, and they are very efficient in keeping my son dry underneath them. So those are just a few things that I recommend from the months to three to six. And if you're looking for any other must have things that I recommend for your little one throughout the years, I would definitely check out my link below that will show you guys my newborn zero to three must, must haves and stay tuned for many more videos just like this. Thanks for watching you guys. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell notification so you will be notified the next time I post a video. All right, bye guys.